In today's video you'll see how we went from having this piece of steel on the car to having to make this piece to replace it and there'll be reasoning to why this was made and what its application and purpose was. So stay tuned to find out more. So here's a question you might be asking yourself. Why are we under the Triton and not the Ford doing any cutting and shutting? The reasoning behind this is because this car is running like a pig now because of the tension that this mount here is under and the reason we nut this mount is because we have to force it on there and that's probably not good so this is tight, this is difficult but what we've got to do is we've got to release this nut here make a new plate up but also figure out what the angle of that plate has to be and correct it and make it right so there's a bit of work involved here and hopefully we'll get this right this time around. So, this point here has to be undone to relieve the tension and that will fix the running gears problem that it had. It's apparently loose. Now you can probably see that tension that's under right now, it's just holding itself there. That's because this uh, mount here is actually not correct. Basically I've put so much tension on it that this bolt while it was holding it up, the nut is going cuckoo. So this is going to bounce up and then that bolt will not be visible anymore. Here's the bolt, if you can see it at all. So I'm touching and there's so much tension and this um, mount is under tension so when I get this up, if I can, That loosens it really much, a lot up. So now that nut is up there, nice and loose, we've got to figure out how much higher this trend needs to be mounted and that piece needs to be up to figure this out. So basically she's up there, so if you can see this is now up, it's nice and loose. She is snug as a bug, and I can move her around from up top. Now what I need to do is figure out roughly what the correct positioning is for this. Because all it's meant to do is take off a bit of tension. Now it's a bit too low this plate, because this is a custom plate I believe. And it's because the original plate was sort of not right for the car. It wasn't fitting properly. So what we need to do first of all is figure out how much of this needs to be cut. So we can figure out the shape and use it as a forming piece to understand where we went wrong. So first of all, I need to bring down this a little bit if I can. If not, I need to just understand roughly a straight line across. Roughly to there. I'm going to go a little bit further. That bit there needs to be cut out. And that will be on the new one that we make up. So that's how, that's where its parallel is going to be. And its height and stuff is going to be written on the plate that's going to be used, so... Okay, so what we do is we grab the verniers, open them up, put them roughly in where it's meant to go, this is approximated, which is 10 centimeters of height. So now that we're done with that, we need to get this big piece of junk out, and we're going to have to fix it up. So on the vehicle this plate was mounted and as we can see it's a bit cacked from all the stress it's been under so I'm going to guess the reason the bolt actually came off of this in the first place is because when it was running it was under that much load and pressure that it flexed the crap out of this plate and that's why the plate's twisted and yucky looking uh, to what we see here. So what we've got to do now is we've got to plan and cut that section out to have an idea of where the straight section is, and it has to be as straight as possible. This is going to be back up there to just check. And then we have to make sure these holes are in the exact same position, same size and everything, to get it right. I believe this was the original plate that came with the car, I think. I could be wrong on that. 
But uh, this was under a lot of force, as you can see from all the flexing in this plate. That's it. Uh, even this uh, new plate is about the same thickness, and I reckon it'll take the same crap this took if it's not mounted properly. Now, in this case, we're not going to actually have just a flat plate in there like this. We're going to take this plate and we're going to weld a flange on it to keep um, this plate straight as possible so when it's under load it can't actually overload it like that. So the idea is this is going to be raised up with a step uh, between here and here. This is going to be up here, this plate. It's going to be folded once, folded twice, folded a third time and then folded the last time. And it's going to be as similar to this as possible and it's going to put it in a neutral position where the transmission is currently happy sitting. When the transmission's under load, there isn't much problems, it's going to load this up. And that's the whole idea. This isn't meant to stop it from idling nicely, this is meant to just smoothen out it when it's um, under load and make sure the trans doesn't go all cuckoo crazy. It's meant to give a little bit of play to be happy, otherwise it just sends vibrations for it and ruins your day. This is the plate we're going to be using. It's about 3mm thick, which is about the same as this thing. If not, it's a little bit thinner, I believe, but it's all we have in the shop. So I'm going to be reproducing this, but better with this. Now we know this is the top, this is the bottom. We know where the thing's got to go in relation to uh, this is the back of the car, this is the front of the car. The plate's going to be better in the sense that there's going to be a fold over here and it's going to be welded to keep the thing as straight as possible with this plate. So we've got enough plate space. We have to put this as close to the edge as possible here. And then we have the folding section over here, bang, and we'll be good. So, just to be on the safe side, I almost did actually make a mistake. The problem is we're going to have to first make the shape we want, and once we have the shape, then we have to identify where the holes are going to be in relation to that shape that we bend up and fold. So the first thing we've got to do is figure out what the size of this piece of material is. And to identify that, we need a width. That width being... about 13.5 centimeters. So 13.5 centimeters is about the plate we're going to get out of this. There's all these cables that are terrible and in the way. So to identify this first step, we need about 13.5 centimeters. This isn't going to be exact, but this is about the same size as the plate, so it's 13.5 centimeters. So that's the first step. Now, on top of that, we need to figure out exactly how much this is going to affect when we do the bends. So, the bending is going to be about 3mm, so we're going to say 13, uh, about 13 tw or 12, I'd say about 12, just to make up the little bit of play we're definitely going to get. So, 12 on each side, and we know where the folds we want are going to be. But it should be okay. And you should be doing this with something sharper than this. This is a texture and this is going to make everything accurate and perfect. This is actually going to make things terrible. But I'm also going to change out to double check it with a sharper tool. So we're still getting things very, very wrong. And I feel like this whole section with the measuring and whatnot is actually completely wrong. I'm going to restart this section of the video, delete it uh, when we get to the vice, and restart. So I've been doing this and trying to figure out how to do this the right way. For one, we're forgetting about this step in between, and that should be roughly in the middle. So wherever this hole is going to be, that's got to be in the middle. <laughs> That was a bit way too much, but hey, it's uh, worked well. And there's our very, very first bend for our plate. Ow. 
So I'm not going to cry, but I had a little tiny accident, I'm going to call it. And there's a reason why this stuff happens, and it's because you, you think you've got an idea, but I don't have any paper, I don't have a whiteboard or anything to come up with a plan. And so I couldn't figure out how to fold this exactly the first time around, so I just basically made a mistake in how I should have folded this. I don't know how to, I still don't know how to do it, and I've just uh, hit my hand on this point here, bang, with the gloves on. It would have probably been worse without the gloves on. It made me feel like sick for a few seconds when I went in and tried to put band-aids on. The band-aids help when you put pressure on it because it stops you feeling sick for some reason. Still feel a little bit queasy, but uh, that's what you expect when you're playing with metal hammers and stuff. So I've got to figure out a way to do this and bend it up. So what I'm going to try and do this time around is first of all, here's the plan. We're going to figure out, okay, first bend. To get the second bend, which is the bend here. Okay, there's not really much to play with. It's better when you can put it in straight into a um, folding machine, which is designed to do this stuff. And it could just go a bang, bang, bang thing and bending it as directly as possible and going bang, 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 bang. Hopefully, this will help. doing much. However, there's one stupid thing I've been doing, is basically bang 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 like that, Just get down here and go. So it doesn't look like it's going to move too easily. I honestly don't know how I'm going to change this, apart from making it thinner, that will make it a bit more pliable and flexible, but uh, I don't really have heavy machines or something to um, help with this. So, I'm just going to have to try and use this or I have to cut it in order to get it to bend. Beautiful, that is exactly where we want it to be. So I'm going to cut it as dead straight as possible according to that line I just drew. And I'm going to cut on that line nowhere else. To cut anywhere beyond that, shit's going to hit the fan. But now we've got one advantage now. We can get a crowbar in there and we should be able to hit that. From up here. terrible craftsman this is not working out whatsoever the bending is not working the way I want it to and I'm f -f 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 boned I am so f -f -f boned with this so this is never gonna work the way I was hoping it to be it's like 
knowing how to craft something and not knowing how to craft something and then trying to figure out how to craft something with the tools you've got. If you haven't got the tools, it's really freaking awful. It's never going to be accurate because it keeps binding up. Batteries running low on power, one reason I've stopped and started. Another reason is because we're getting there. We're very close, it's okay. Not perfect, very imperfect actually. This is now technically a scrap. That is and isn't useful to us. Next up, so we're going to try and straighten this up, which is very fun since we don't actually have any blocks. Actually, I do have a block. So over a bit of a time span where this battery on my camera ran out, and I've been doing work without you guys uh, seeing anything, I've uh, made this piece, which was originally this one here so we can see a bit of craftsmanship in this and we were having troubles we're still having some troubles with folding and all that stuff this is almost perfect all i got to do is i got to shave a bit of meat out of there for when it goes up and i got to shave this a little bit that way as well so then it frees up the it adds a bit of slop to where the bolt's going to reside and the nut if i don't do that what's going to happen is going to pull the transmission towards the uh chassis in the wrong direction and it's not going to feel nice and safe and it's not going to be nice and neat. Man, bam, thank you ma'am, I'm going to try that and I'm going to see how that fits on the vehicle because if I chew this and that, it gets weaker and so what the idea is, is I'll chew up the hole first, see if it fits nice and neatly because the uh, edge is going to fit somewhere over here a bit further out when it's nice and straight. Okay, so we are here under the car looking at this new component in place. Uh, I can't see where my finger is in relation to the camera. Haha. <laughs> Here we go, here's one bolt, two bolts, and here's where the nut goes. That should make things a little bit better on the tranny and make it feel much nicer. As you can see, it's nice and loose. And the slot is over there somewhere. Roughly right here is the slot. And you can't really see that, but uh, now you can see it's roughly right where it needs to be. I'm going to be happy with that. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to weld it up and be done. And hopefully this will solve the problem of the shakes and the crappiness it was giving. And also not to mention there is actual thread there now. So we can actually put the bolt on easy and it will sit where it wants to sit and secure itself right there. So good on you, car. Now it's up to the next stage where we're going to have to weld component, then we're going to clean it, and then we've got to dry it quick enough that we can start getting everything ready to put back together. So it's going to be about every task being done in as smoothly as we possibly can get them done out.
I'm not happy waiting, so instead of putting this piece of steel back in the car, I'm definitely not going to put it back in there anyway. I'm going to take this almost dry piece of steel that we made up today, and I'm going to install it basically now, even though it's not perfectly painted or anything. I feel like I should just do that anyway, but I can do that while it's in the car, some of this that needs painting. So I'm going to do that right now. The absolute moment of truth. Will this resolve the problems we had? Or will it just cause more heartache? But if this resolves the issue, I am definitely 100% happy. So we're going to put it up there just loosely for now. Nut thing. Now let's hope this solves the problem. <clears throat> Please. God. God almighty. Ugh. It's very hard to get leverage under the car anyway. <clears throat> okay, that solves that problem. And this one has to be nice and tight as well, which it won't move much. It will only do work under load. Now she's not hitting. She's not angry or upset. I don't know why she looks so twisty now. After. We have to make sure she goes in nice and smoothly and good and well. If she goes in just a slight bit out, she might just cack it again. And give me grief. Who knows, knows what grief it's going to give me. That's why I'm pushing the plates as much as I can in the right directions. Tightening up the plate. Now there is a 2mm, 3mm gap on the plate. Let's tighten this up. <clears throat> nice and solid. <clears throat> That's nice and solid. Now let's see, there's 2mm there play. Ow. Oh crap, that was my tripod with my foot. And she twisted a little bit. There should be enough in here to avoid it coming apart. That's enough. She's not going to go tighter than that. There's a little bit of play in it, but it's at the right point, so it shouldn't go coo coo ka -choo. We're about to find out how that has fixed the problem. So, guys, we are going to quickly... Okay. So, guys, we're looking up at the trans point, the mount. If you can see that little space, the trans mount looks a bit twisted. It doesn't look like parallel to its own bracket. The bolts are all in, it's all sort of painted, not perfectly, but uh, yeah, it looks like a brand new piece. And we're going to hope that solves the problem. You can shake the trans just a tiny smidgen, but it's uh, not going to move much. So we're going to hope that this solves the problem. If it doesn't, I'm in big trouble trying to solve this. Okay guys, so this is the moment of truth. I'm hoping to hear nothing. Out of the ordinary. I'm hoping this sounds nice and neat and tidy. No vibrations, no rattles, no nothing. I'm hoping it makes it sound just right as it should be and nothing's gonna break. Shouldn't. In theory, it shouldn't. So it's a little bit better. There's still vibrations. So I'm not really sure why that mount causing the car to rock so much and shake. That's me shaking the car up. But uh, I'm gonna have to call it a day and say that it is basically fine. Even though it's not really fine. It 
it's okay, it's not perfect. the car what's wrong with that mount Absolutely atrocious, it's not working. The car's running fine, but the mount. There's something funny about that mount. I'm not sure what it is, but that mount is giving me a good grief. I feel like just making this rear wheel drive. No four-wheel driving with this car whatsoever. Basically take the knob off and say, don't touch. Because four-wheel drive is important. It's not absolutely essential, but there's not enough play. There's something funny about that point that's causing it a lot of grief and not to work function uh, correctly. So basically if I take the nut off, it will solve some of the problems. I could always put a dampener on it, basically another rubber, and that should dampen some of the vibrations it's causing other than that that's not working correctly there's still some crap I wonder what it feels like over there you can see the whole thing's just shaking and when I hit the accelerator smoothens ah. shouldn't have let the door go but that's what the vibrations are doing they're shaking the crap out of everything that's going bleh horrible. Well, anyway, I'm going to just have to leave it alone and call it a quits because that's not going to work. Unfortunately. So it's a little bit better.